but I'm glad somebody else is doing that. So two thirds of people, as we said, it's actually three quarters now. This slide is actually out of date. Three quarters of people have now achieved obesity or overweight. They have visceral fat in excess. Now, what's interesting is some people that are actually not fat, they don't appear fat, but they are over fat, even though they're thin. So their percentage of their body is still too high of visceral fat. So you don't have to be big in order to be over fat. You can be over fat and still be thin. And if you're over fat and have too much visceral fat, your risks of producing these inflammatory markers like IL-6 and uh, TNF alpha, et cetera, will contribute to heart disease, type two diabetes, stroke, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. These are the conditions that are killing most of the people that you know. Diabetes, for example, is increased uh, geometrically. In fact, the correlation coefficients between increasing obesity and increasing diabetes is almost one to one. It's almost like there's a you know connection. The fatter we get, the more insulin resistance we have, the more the incidence of diabetes. And it's blowing up amongst kids today. It's just almost unbelievable. So what society has done is said, hell, heck, uh, eat health foods. And they tell you health foods are olive oil, red wine, dark chocolate, coffee, coconut, anything, diet sodas, white meats. Uh, the low-fat dairy products, and the dead Dr. Atkins diet may his filet of soul rest in peace. They'll tell you that eating a high-fat, high-protein diet will mimic fasting, and therefore that's a good long-term strategy for health. I would disagree. Um, a healthy diet and healthy foods would look like this, fruits and vegetables, grains, legumes, nuts and seeds, a whole plant food, SOS-free diet. You know, recently, Whole Foods Market sold to Amazon for, I think, somewhere around $16 billion. And I had made the argument that there's not a lot of whole foods in whole foods market, that most of the foods in whole foods market are meat, fish, fowl, eggs, dairy products, um, processed grains, alcohol, uh, sugary products that a small percentage, maybe 5% of the total products uh, involve the sales of fruits and vegetables <laughs> and minimally processed grains. And that probably 1% of profit or less uh, are responsible uh, from actual whole foods. And, and it turns out it may even be less than that. But it was explained to me that we should be grateful to the people in whole foods market that are buying the meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy products, oil, salt, and sugar, because they're responsible for virtually all of the profit of the store. And without them, there would be no uh, chain being purchased for $16 billion. Uh, by Amazon. So now when I go into Whole Foods Market and I see people filling up with all this olive oil and red wine and dark chocolate, I have a different attitude. I go over to them and I actually thank them uh, for their support because I realize they're the reason why we can still find some uh, fruits and vegetables and, and grains in a national chain. So the leading causes of death uh, today are heart disease, cancer, and stroke. And we spend Billions and billions and billions of dollars treating heart disease, cancer, and stroke. We do bypass surgeries and all kinds of fancy surgical procedures and radiation and chemotherapy and all kinds of rehabilitation. We just spend huge quantities of money treating, as you would expect, the leading cause of death, heart disease, cancer, stroke. What we don't spend much money or time on are the actual causes of death. That is the reason people get heart disease, cancer, and stroke. And it turns out the reason people get heart disease, cancer, and stroke is smoking, drinking, and eating an animal-based diet rich in salt, oil, and sugar. So think about what would happen if we shifted our focus of treating the actual causes of death instead of the leading cause of death and actually prevented people getting sick to begin with what the consequences would have, not only in the lives of our individual patients, but also on society as a whole. Let's look at it a different way, the actual cause of death. Number one on this list is tobacco. I mean, tobacco is fabulous. It's just wonderful at causing premature death and disability because it works on virtually every organ system in the body. Now, most people think of smoking, they think of what? Lung cancer. But do you know that only 20% of people that smoke get lung cancer? So what does that mean that smoking is protecting the other 
No, what it means is that people are dying from heart disease before they live long enough to grow their lung tumors. What, if you made smoking more dangerous and everybody died from heart disease, would they be allowed to advertise smoking as cancer safe? I don't know, probably. Blood pressure elevation is one of the other major contributing causes of death. And elevated blood pressure leads to congestive heart failure. That's where your heart loses integrity and you can't, you can't have to sleep sitting up because if you lay down, your lungs can fill with fluid. Uh, it, it leads to stroke where people lose motor function. And, um, high blood pressure contributes to heart attacks, mostly cardiovascular disease. Alcohol consumption. Look at this. Alcohol, as we said, is not healthy. Not only does it make people overweight uh, and lead to uh, liver disease and kidney disease, increased risk of cancer. In fact, even two drinks a week are enough to increase a woman's lifetime risk of breast cancer. Um, cholesterol level. Cholesterol is really just a marker for how much animal food you eat. Cholesterol itself is an essential component of the body and too much quantity, obviously it can plug up the blood vessels with fat and lead to problems. Um, but cholesterol itself isn't really the, the main problem. It's, it's a marker for how much animal food you eat. It's the animal food, the high animal protein intake that's actually most responsible for much of the disease we're dealing with. Being overweight is not healthy. You can love yourself how you are, but you wanna get yourself how you should be if you wanna avoid premature death and disability. If you wanna live your life fully, until you reach your genetic potential and go to bed one night and don't wake up, rather than find yourself unable to talk or move lying in some nursing home bed for 20 years, you want to make sure that you don't maintain excess weight on your body. A low fruit and vegetable intake, independent of weight, just not eating enough fruits and vegetables, probably because of the effect that it has on avoiding dietary excess, as well as getting you the phytochemicals and other nutrients that you need. Just not eating enough fruits and vegetables is a major actual cause of death and disability. Not exercising illicit drugs and unsafe sex. These are the actual causes of death. These are where the least amount of attention is paid. That's where we need to focus our full efforts. Today, metabolic syndrome composes uh, the major epidemic that's killing uh, most people. If your waist if your circumference is too large, if you have elevated triglycerides or blood pressure or blood glucose, uh, low HDL levels. If you have three or more of these, you're considered to have what's called metabolic syndrome. And most people you know will develop metabolic syndrome and they will have, without any question, increased risk of these conditions. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, liver cancer, colorectal cancer, gout, diabetes, stroke, congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction. This is what's killing the people that you know. And the cause of it is this dietary excess. This is an example of a coronary artery. This is before and after. This is not after a stent or a bypass procedure. This is just dietary change for 32 months on a plant-based diet without cholesterol-lowering medications, et cetera. This is a reversible process. We know with fasting, you can uh, reverse this process even more quickly. So what should, what's left? If we can't eat meat, fish, oil, eggs, dairy products, oil, salt, and sugar, if we have to get rid of 93% of all the calories that most people are eating, what do we eat? Well, Foods to include include fruits, raw and cooked vegetables, raw nuts and seeds, and complex carbohydrates, the fuel that you're designed to eat. So potatoes, yam, squash, minimally processed, whole non-glutinous grains, and beans like lentils and peas, et cetera. Why do we eat three times a day? Why don't we just eat one time a week? Or maybe one time a month, that would be more convenient. Well, the reason is you have to get in your eight hour feeding window enough calories in order to meet your needs. So if you're not overweight and living off your reserves, you need to get you know, an average of 2000 calories a day. Now you might only need 1600 calories if you're a small person with limited activity, you might need up to 3500 calories a day if you're a vigorous athletic uh, individual, et cetera. But the average person needs about 2000 calories a day. Well, when you remember that salad has 100 calories a pound and fruit has 300 calories a pound and beans, rice, and grains have 500 calories a pound, you realize you need quite a few pounds a day of food in order to be able to get what you eat. And your stomach can only process so much at one time. So if you fill up the human being stomach 
with these low density foods, you may get somewhere between five, 700 calories or so. And so you have to fill it up two or three times a day just to get enough volume. And so we generally talk about a three meal program, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. One meal might be, you know, something like fresh fruit, let's say it may be some oatmeal and flax seeds. Another might be a large vegetable salad, some steamed vegetables, maybe a potato, maybe a, a grains or beans, you know, in the evening meal. Large amounts of salad. Now, one way you can tell if you have enough salad, you can weigh it on a scale, or you can just put it down at work and wait till people walk in the room. And when they see your salad, they'll go, oh my gosh, you're not going to try to eat all that, are you? And uh, if they don't react with shock and awe, what that means is you didn't get a big enough bowl, you need a bucket. They should react with shock and awe when they see how much you're eating, because you're eating a large quantity of low density food. And it's going to fill you up so there's not that much room left to overeat on the high concentrated foods. And you're going to avoid all the animal foods, the oil, the salt, the sugar. And what you're going to do is if you're a male, you're going to lose three pounds a week down to optimum weight. If you're a female, you're going to lose about two pounds a week down to optimum weight. So why is it that women lose 50% less men weight than men? Is it because men are more disciplined, they're smarter, they work harder? No, it's because men are full of testosterone, which is a fat burning hormone. If you inject women with the male hormone testosterone, their fat would melt off them, but then they would get hairy and get cancer and die. So it's not a really good strategy. If you inject men with estrogen, they get fat, they grow breasts and get hips. These are biological differences between males and females. And that's why if you're a woman, you notice you go say on a, on a diet with your husband that you're perfect, measure everything. You lose two ounces. He's cheating at in and out burger at lunch and he loses a pound because males will burn everything else being equal. Uh, fat more quickly than women work. So what does that mean if you're a woman and you're trying to lose weight? It means you have to work twice as hard to get half the results. So you have to get used to it. I don't make the rules. Okay, so we're going to eat three times a day. We're going to fill our bodies up with raw and cooked vegetables and enough potatoes, rice, and beans so we don't get too skinny. Include up to an ounce of nuts or seeds a day. Have some whole fruit and then avoid all the processed stuff. Lose the weight and get healthy. This is a picture of fruit. Fruit. Salad, salad, vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. You start to get the idea. Vegetables, vegetables, some squash, some soup. So I'm going to do a little food demonstration for you real quickly here, just so those of you that need to know how to prepare this food. This is an example of a banana. Okay, so what you do with this is you take the banana and you peel it and then you eat it. But the tip is don't eat the outside. You know, that's nasty. Just eat the inside. Now, I know some of you are thinking, okay, well, that's quick and easy. I could probably do that, but I want variety in my, my life. I don't want to just eat bananas like that. And that's okay. I'm going to show you how to do it a different way. You take the banana and you start the other way, and then you peel it and you eat it. So maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you peel it from the top. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you peel it from the bottom. It's a whole different experience. But maybe you want additional ideas on how to eat a whole plant food diet. We have uh, three cookbooks, the Health Morning Cookbook, the Bravo Express Cookbook, and the Bravo Cookbook. These are all vegan, SOS-free cookbooks. That means we don't use any animal products or salt, oil, and sugar in any of these recipes. And they are simple enough that even I, I can make them. And if you haven't read our book, The Pleasure Trap, you should. Or if you don't like reading, listen to the audio version of it. Because it'll explain to you not what you need, not what you want to hear, but what you need to know to get and stay healthy. Um, at the True North Health Center, we offer um, residential care for fasting supervision, and we have an internship and residency program for physicians. If you know a doctor that would like to go to heaven instead of hell and do something worthwhile with their life, we provide at no cost to the doctor room, board, and training so that they can learn how to use a whole plant food diet, and the use of medically supervised water-only fasting in order to help people actually recover their health uh, and regain uh, their vitality. Um, all of our research articles are available uh, at www.fasting.org. So if you do know a doctor or you are a doctor that would like to learn how to actually get people well, come to True North Health and do and participate in our internship or residency program, and we'll show you what you need to know uh, to make that happen. <music>